1932, the classic film A Farewell to Arms was cast with great care. The lead roles were given to Gary Cooper as Frederick Henry and Helen Hayes as Catherine Barclay. Cooper, known for his strong and silent screen presence, was chosen for his ability to convey the complex emotions of Frederick, an American ambulance driver in World War I. Hayes, a highly respected stage and screen actress, was picked for her delicate portrayal of Catherine, a British nurse. The chemistry between Cooper and Hayes was pivotal, and the film's success hinged on their ability to create a believable and engaging love story amidst the backdrop of war. To ensure this, the director, Frank Borzage, had them spend time together offset to build a rapport. Their natural affinity for each other translated beautifully on screen, creating one of the most memorable love stories in cinema history. The supporting roles were also carefully selected. Adolf Menju, an experienced and sophisticated actor, was cast as Major Rinaldi, a friend of Frederick's who facilitates his romance with Catherine. Veteran actor Jack LaRue played the role of priest who provides spiritual guidance to Frederick. His calm and reassuring presence added depth to the character and the film as a whole. The casting of A Farewell to Arms was a careful process of selecting actors who could not only portray their characters authentically, but also create a compelling and cohesive ensemble. The result was a film that has stood the test of time and continues to be appreciated for its powerful storytelling and unforgettable performances. The director of A Farewell to Arms, Frank Borzage, was known for his poetic and deeply emotional style. He approached the story with a focus on the romantic relationship between the two main characters, played by Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes. Borzage was influenced by the Italian neorealist movement, which emphasized naturalism and the beauty of everyday life. This influence can be seen in the film's visual style, which often features long takes and natural lighting. Borzage's collaborative approach with the cast and crew was also noteworthy. He worked closely with cinematographer Charles Lang to create the film's distinctive look, and he encouraged the actors to explore their characters' emotions in depth. Borzage's direction was marked by his ability to elicit subtle and nuanced performances from his actors. The film's production design, led by Richard Day, also played a crucial role in bringing the story to life. Day sets were meticulously crafted to evoke the film's various locations, from the Italian Alps to the bustling streets of Milan. The result is a rich and immersive visual experience that draws the viewer into the story. Overall, Borzage's directorial vision for A Farewell to Arms was marked by his poetic style, his focus on character and emotion, and his collaborative approach with the cast and crew. The film stands as a testament to his skill as a director and his ability to bring a complex and nuanced story to life on the screen. A Farewell to Arms is a classic movie from 1932, based on Ernest Hemingway's novel. It's a love story set in the midst of World War I, starring Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes. Throughout the film, you'll find moments that are funny, shocking, and sad. Did you know that Hemingway himself was not a fan of the movie adaptation? Or that the original ending was changed due to negative test audience reactions? There are many more surprising facts that we'll share with you as we delve into this film. Do you have a cherished memory or a personal experience related to A Farewell to Arms? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. As we explore this movie, we'll uncover its historical significance, the challenges faced during production, and its impact on cinema. So, stay tuned to learn more about this fascinating film. The 1932 movie, A Farewell to Arms, was produced with great attention to detail, particularly in set design and locations. The film is set during World War I, and the production team aimed to accurately depict the time period. They built elaborate sets, including a replica of a military hospital and trenches that mimic those used in the war. The film was shot in various locations, including Fox Studios in California and the Sierra Nevada Mountain, which doubled as the Italian Alps. The production team faced logistical challenges in transporting equipment and crew to these remote locations. Additionally, they had to ensure that the sets were built to withstand harsh weather conditions, such as snow and rain. To capture the battle scenes, the production team employed innovative techniques and technologies. They used miniature sets and models, which they filmed at high speeds, and then projected at slower speeds to create the illusion of large-scale battles. This technique, known as rear projection, allowed them to create realistic battle scenes 
while maintaining control over the environment. The film's director, Frank Borzage, was known for his meticulous attention to detail and his ability to elicit powerful performances from his actors. He worked closely with the set designers and cinematographers to create a cohesive vision for the film. The result is a visually stunning and emotionally powerful film that remains a classic in the history of cinema. The 1932 film A Farewell to Arms is Hollywood's adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's famous novel about World War I. The movie simplifies the psychological complexity of the novel, focusing primarily on the doomed love affair between the two main characters. Despite this, the film tackles some themes about the impact of war on people and their decisions. As a pre-code film, A Farewell to Arms is relatively racy, dealing openly with topics such as sex before marriage and the fact that many women during the war gave themselves to soldiers due to the uncertainty of the future. Gary Cooper plays one of the main characters and is likely the main draw for many viewers. However, I found that Helen Hayes, who plays the female lead, delivers a more impressive performance. She handles the majority of the acting, demonstrating her ability to transfer her talents from the stage to the screen. The film is more technically ambitious than many movies from the same time period, featuring an impressive montage that conveys the devastation and daily grind of warfare. The cinematographer, Charles Lang, won the Oscar for Best Cinematography for his work on this film and received 16 additional nominations throughout his career. A Farewell to Arms also won the Oscar for Best Sound Recording and was nominated for Best Picture and Best Art Direction. Overall, A Farewell to Arms is a well-made film that tells a compelling story, even if it doesn't fully capture the complexity of the original novel. The acting, cinematography, and sound design are all noteworthy, making this a movie worth watching for fans of classic cinema. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a meticulous process and the 1932 movie A Farewell to Arms is no exception. The music, composed by Herbert Stothart, plays a crucial role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone of the film. Stothart's score is primarily orchestral, with a focus on strings and woodwinds. This choice of instrumentation mirrors the film's somber and introspective themes, providing a melodic backdrop that enhances the emotional depth of the story. The music subtly underscores the characters' feelings, enhancing the audience's connection with them. The soundtrack also includes popular songs of the era, carefully selected to reflect the characters' experiences and emotions. For instance, the song The Loveliest Night of the Year is used to express the blossoming romance between the main characters. Stothart worked closely with the film's director, Frank Borzage, to ensure the music aligned perfectly with the narrative. This collaboration resulted in a score that seamlessly integrates with the film's visuals, enhancing the overall viewing experience. The musicians involved in the creation of the score, including members of the 20th Century Fox Studio Orchestra, brought Stothart's compositions to life. Their skillful playing and nuanced interpretation added an extra layer of emotional resonance to the music. In conclusion, the creation of the score and soundtrack for A Farewell to Arms was a collaborative effort that involved careful consideration of the film's narrative and emotional tone. The result is a compelling musical accompaniment that deepens the audience's connection with the characters and story. In 1932, A Farewell to Arms was a major success, standing as the third most popular film at the U.S. box office. Starring Gary Cooper, the movie was later re-released in 1938 but had to undergo changes due to the production code. 12 minutes of footage were excised to meet the code standards, but producer David O. Selznick had wisely preserved the original cut by acquiring an original negative. As for Gary Cooper, his life was tragically cut short when he was diagnosed with metastatic cancer in his lungs and bones in 1961, following two operations for prostate cancer and colon cancer. Despite the grim diagnosis, Cooper faced it with courage and opted not to take extensive treatment, echoing his stoic character in The Pride of the Yankees. The preserved original negative of A Farewell to Arms is a valuable asset, as Selznick eventually acquired the remake rights in 1955, releasing his own version two years later with Rock Hudson and Jennifer Jones. The original cut remains a testament to the film's enduring legacy and a glimpse into the past, offering a captivating and intriguing look at the early days of Hollywood. One of the most iconic scenes in A Farewell to Arms is when Frederick Henry, played by Gary Cooper, and Catherine Barclay, portrayed by Helen Hayes, first meet in a hospital in Milan. 
The subtle direction, understated performances, and effective use of lighting make this scene memorable. Director Frank Borzig uses soft lighting to create an intimate atmosphere, focusing on the character's faces and body language. The camera remains still, allowing the actor's performances to take center stage. Cooper's understated portrayal of Frederick's initial attraction to Catherine is palpable, while Hayes' nuanced delivery of Catherine's lines adds depth to her character. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It establishes the central romance of the film and sets the tone for the rest of the story. The quiet intensity of the scene draws viewers in, making them invested in the character's relationship. Unfortunately, specific commentary from the filmmakers and actors about this particular scene is scarce. However, in general, Borzeg was known for his ability to create intimate, emotionally charged scenes. Cooper and Hayes were both praised for their performances in the film, with Hayes winning the Academy Award for Best Actress. Another iconic scene is the final sequence, where Frederick and Catherine attempt to escape to Switzerland by boat. The tension is palpable as they row across the lake, with the threat of capture and death looming over them. The cinematography is stunning, with sweeping shots of the lake and the surrounding mountains. The impact of this scene is immense, as it brings the film's themes of love, war, and death to a poignant climax. The final shot of Frederick alone on the lake is particularly powerful, leaving a lasting impression on the audience. Borzage direction and the actor's performances contribute to the success of this scene. The use of close-ups and medium shots creates a sense of intimacy, while the wide shots of the lake add a sense of scale and grandeur. Cooper and Hayes' performances are heart-wrenching with their fear and desperation palpable. While there is no specific commentary from the filmmakers or actors about this scene, Borzage was known for his ability to create emotionally resonant endings. Cooper and Hayes' performances in the film were highly praised, with critics noting their chemistry and emotional depth. Gary Cooper's career experienced a setback in the early 1950s when his film You're in the Navy now flopped, and he disappeared from the top 10 box office stars list. However, he made a comeback with High Noon in 1952. During his career, Cooper worked with director Sam Wood in four films, including The Pride of the Yankees and For Whom the Bell Tolls. In A Farewell to Arms, Cooper played against type as he portrayed a priest, a role usually not associated with his typical characters. Jack LaRue, known for his gangster roles, took on this unconventional part, adding depth to the film's narrative. The 1932 movie, A Farewell to Arms, based on Ernest Hemingway's novel, had a significant cultural and social impact. The film, starring Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes, resonated with audiences due to its anti-war theme, which was particularly relevant during the Great Depression. It sparked discussions about the harsh realities of war and its impact on individuals and society. The movie influenced pop culture by popularizing Hemingway's work and introducing his unique storytelling style to a wider audience. It also contributed to the growing trend of films adapted from best-selling novels. The film's success helped to establish the genre of romantic war dramas and influence future filmmakers to explore similar themes. A Farewell to Arms addressed relevant social and cultural themes, such as the futility of war, the human cost of conflict, and the struggle for personal freedom. The film's portrayal of a love affair between a wounded soldier and a nurse also touched on themes of love, sacrifice, and human connection in the face of adversity. These themes resonated with audiences and contributed to the film's enduring popularity. In summary, A Farewell to Arms had a significant cultural and social impact by resonating with audiences, influencing pop culture, and contributing to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The film's exploration of anti-war sentiments, human connection, and personal freedom helped to establish it as a classic in American cinema. The 1932 film A Farewell to Arms, based on Ernest Hemingway's novel, has connections to a Broadway play that premiered two years earlier. This play, written by Lawrence Stallings, featured a cast of actors including Glenn Anders, Joe Downing, Jack LaRue, and Alyssa Landy. One of the actors in the film, Gary Cooper, experienced a significant personal event during this time. In 1951, he separated from his wife, Rocky, due to his affair with Patricia Neal. They didn't reunite until 1954. Cooper's on-screen persona in the early 1930s, as seen in A Farewell to Arms, was one of tall, natural American elegance. 
This image was so strong that it inspired the 1946 lyric to Irving Berlin's song Putting on the Ritz. The line trying hard to look like Gary Cooper pays homage to Cooper's distinctive style during this period. In the film designed for living, Cooper's persona is particularly evident. He plays a character inspired by Howard Hughes, whom Cooper resembled. This role showcases Cooper's early sound and pre-cowboy days, a time when his tall, elegant demeanor was widely admired. The 1932 movie, A Farewell to Arms, received mixed reviews from critics. The New York Times praised the film's leading actors, Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes, for their sympathetic performances. However, the same review criticized the film for its slightly disjointed narrative and occasionally awkward dialogue. The audience reactions were generally positive, with many praising the film's romantic storyline and stunning cinematography. The film's portrayal of the Italian front during World War I also resonated with audiences, providing a glimpse into the harsh realities of war. A Farewell to Arms received four Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, Best Cinematography, Best Art Direction, and Best Sound Recording. While it did not win in any of these categories, the nominations themselves were a significant achievement and served to legitimize the film's status as a major motion picture. The nominations and positive audience reactions were undoubtedly a source of pride for those involved in the film's production. For Gary Cooper, the nomination for Best Actor represented a significant milestone in his career and helped to solidify his status as a leading man in Hollywood. Similarly, for director Frank Borzage, the nomination for Best Director was a testament to his skill and artistry in bringing the story to life on screen. Overall, while A Farewell to Arms may not be remembered as one of the greatest films of all time, its critical reception and awards nomination serve as a reminder of its enduring appeal and the talent of those involved in its production. Adolf Menju, known for his role in A Farewell to Arms, was a conservative figure who named names to the House Committee on Un-American Activities during the 1947 hearings on communist subversion in Hollywood. He was outspoken in his ultra-right-wing political views and once stated that all communists should be shot, regardless of citizenship. On the other hand, Helen Hayes, who also starred in the movie, led a quieter life. She resided in an historic house in Nyack, New York, named Pretty Penny, where she frequently offered tours of her well-maintained gardens to local garden clubs. After her death, the house was sold to television personality and actress Rosie O'Donnell by her surviving son, actor James MacArthur. Gary Cooper, who played the lead role in A Farewell to Arms, was a popular actor who topped the box office in 1953. He made the top 10 list of money making stars 18 times between 1936 and 1957, setting a record that was only broken by John Wayne in 1974. Cooper's popularity exceeded that of other leading actors, including Clark Gable, making him a beloved figure in Hollywood. The filming of A Farewell to Arms in 1932 was not without its challenges. The director, Frank Borzage, had a tumultuous relationship with the film star, Gary Cooper. Cooper known for his laid-back attitude, clashed with Borzage's meticulous and demanding direction. This tension often led to heated arguments on set, causing delays in filming. Despite these difficulties, the cast and crew persevered. Helen Hayes, who played Catherine Barkley, formed a close bond with Cooper Offset. They would often spend their free time together, which helped ease the tension between Cooper and Borzage. The film cinematographer, Charles Lang, was instrumental in creating the movie's iconic visual style. He used innovative techniques, such as natural lighting and deep focus, to capture the film's emotional depth. However, these techniques required numerous takes, further prolonging the filming process. The film's budget also caused significant issues. Due to the Great Depression, the studio, Paramount Pictures, was struggling financially. As a result, they closely monitored the film's expenses, causing tension between the studio executives and the film's producers. Despite these challenges, A Farewell to Arms went on to become a critical and commercial success. They received four Academy Award nominations, including for Best Picture and Best Cinematography. The film's legacy continues to resonate today, with its powerful storytelling and innovative cinematography influencing generations of filmmakers. Helen Hayes is known for her Oscar-winning role in The Sin of Maidlon Claudette, where her character becomes pregnant. She was one of the 12 actresses to win the Best Actress Oscar for playing a pregnant character. 
Gary Cooper, who starred in The Farewell to Arms, was considered a natural method actor by Lee Strasberg, even though he criticized the new school of acting in the 1950s. Cooper admired Marlon Brando's work and became a producing partner with his father. A 30-minute radio adaptation of A Farewell to Arms was broadcasted on April 10, 1944, with Gary Cooper reprising his film role. The 1932 film, A Farewell to Arms, based on Ernest Hemingway's novel, holds a significant place in film history. As a pre-code film, it pushed boundaries with its mature themes and love story against the backdrop of World War I. The movie's emotional intensity and deep human drama influence future filmmaking, inspiring filmmakers to delve into complex emotional territories. Gary Cooper's portrayal of Lieutenant Frederick Henry left an impact on cinema's leading men with his subtle yet powerful acting style. The film's innovative use of long takes and mobile cameras also influenced cinematography, inspiring filmmakers to explore new visual techniques. A Farewell to Arms sparked a series of films exploring the human condition within the context of war. It paved the way for movies like Casablanca and The English Patient, which also examined love, loss, and war. The film's raw emotion and compelling narrative continue to resonate with audiences, making it a lasting testament to the power of cinema. Gary Cooper, the leading actor in A Farewell to Arms, stood at an imposing 6'2 tall, though he often claimed to be 6'3. On the other side, Helen Hayes, who also starred in the film, was the daughter of Francis Van Arnhem Brown and Catherine Estelle Hayes. The story of A Farewell to Arms takes place over a specific time frame from February to November 4th, 1918, during the final stages of World War I. This precise setting adds to the film's historical accuracy and authenticity, making it all the more engaging for the audience. Gilbert Emery was a character actor known for his portrayals of distinguished and aristocratic figures in films from 1921 until his death in 1945. During this time, he worked alongside many notable actors and actresses. In 1931, Gary Cooper, one of the biggest stars of the time, suffered a nervous breakdown due to overwork, physical illness, and personal conflicts. He had been working long hours, sometimes up to 23 hours a day, making one film during the day and another at night. This intense schedule, combined with his health issues, led to a significant weight loss, dropping 30 pounds, and reaching a dangerously low weight of 148 pounds. Despite his health struggles, Cooper continued to have a successful career in the film industry. In 1944, he formed his own production company, International Pictures, with Samuel Goldwyn and other partners. They produced nine movies, two of which starred Cooper himself. In 1946, they sold the company to Universal Pictures, which changed its name to Universal International. Throughout his career, Cooper made a significant impact on the film industry and left a lasting legacy. Emery, on the other hand, was a reliable and consistent character actor who added depth and distinction to the many films he appeared in. Both men made valuable contributions to the world of cinema and left behind a body of work that continues to be appreciated today. Have you seen the 1932 classic, A Farewell to Arms? This film, based on Ernest Hemingway's novel, is a powerful exploration of love and war. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this movie. How did A Farewell to Arms impact you personally? Did it influence your perspective on cinema? Share your thoughts with us. Your engagement through likes, shares, and subscriptions helps us continue our cinematic explorations. We're not looking for elaborate analyzes, just your honest reaction and memories. Whether it's your favorite scene, the performance that moved you, or the lasting impression the film left, we're eager to hear your story. So, let's start a conversation. Share your memories of A Farewell to Arms, and help us keep the love for classic cinema alive. Your participation contributes to our community and is greatly appreciated.